Okay, I promised you guys I was going to talk about uh, her in interviews with uh, Katie Couric and everybody. Uh, so here goes. Okay, back to a couple months ago. Uh, Sarah was interviewed uh, by I don't recall who. Sorry, uh, so many interviews, so little time. Uh, but she had mentioned the fact that she didn't even know what a vice president does. She'd like to know that. Well, if you've paid any attention, read a newspaper or two, you kind of have an idea of what a vice president does. Now, if she waits for McKay to teach her, she's going to be in deep doo-doo if she ever has to take things over because, uh, according to a speech he gave, his idea of what a vice president should do is to uh, break ties in Congress and to... Um, Inquire as to the health, <laughs> inquire as to the health of the president on a daily basis. Now, granted, yes, they are supposed to break ties in Congress. Not that that's happened any time in recent history that I can recall. Um, but that's not all there is to the job. So if she's learning that from him, she's she's really in trouble when she gets in there. You want to talk about them worried about uh, Barack Obama having to on the job train? Yeah, he's got a little more knowledge than she does, so let's worry about her on the job training. Okay, we've all talked about uh, in the interviews her misunderstanding of foreign policy and um, her experience with foreign policy. Yeah, I know. I know I'm being generous tonight. But what concerns me is that is she that ignorant or... Um, you know, it, are, are the people who are supposed to be uh, training her uh, doing their job, or is she just that bad of a student? Um, I would hope that uh, sharing a maritime border with Russia and sharing a land border with Canada would be the the ver bare minimum of what you would need to know as far as par foreign policy is concerned. The bare minimum. I read a paper every day. I know a little bit about foreign policy. I think I even actually know a little bit more than her about foreign policy, and that kind of scares me. As far as her interviews go, the last one with Katie Couric, I mean, she, uh, Katie and all the other reporters and journalists, whatever words you choose to use, should turn a cold shoulder to her, should ignore her, should not follow her with the video cameras, and just and shouldn't interview her because apparently she has quite a not, uh, an issue uh, just like the rest of the McCain campaign with the elitists um, who are reporting to us what's going on. Um, the problem is is that if they're reporting what's true, they get in trouble. But if they just continue to, to regurgitate all the lovely talking points that are given to them, then they're okay. Um, she mocked the reporters the same as she feels she was being mocked by saying to Katie, uh, reporters, you know, when discussing about how she felt uh, being mocked, she couldn't even find the right word. Katie had to give her the word. Um, I find that pretty sad. Um, if you're that angry about it, you definitely know the words you want to use. You might stumble a little bit, but you definitely know the word you want to use, whether it's mocked. Uh, I think she was having difficulty finding the word because she was trying to find one that wasn't going to have to be censored out. Okay, like most uh, most uh, politicians, um, Sarah Palin speaks in circles. This is what they call spin. The reason they call it spin is because it makes your head spin to listen to. Okay, um, she uh, she babbles. I mean, totally babbles like a brook. Uh, it, it's crazy. Um, she can't seem to uh, complete a sentence or a thought in a manner that that you would expect of a vice presidential candidate. Um, they should at least have a clue when they're going in there what it is they're going to say and how to say it in a complete sentence and that it doesn't matter um, how you say it you need to answer the question that's posed not just come up with some crazy stuff um, Tina Fey had a great <laughs> had a great show this past weekend uh, she's fabulous and it makes it very difficult for anybody else to uh, to parody her because uh, you know, Tina's just got it down cold, talking about uh, economic crises and uh, you know a, a dollar meal from McDonald's. It was just hilarious. Look, Sarah Palin is not an unintelligent woman. Um, not not at all. 
which makes this whole situation even sadder. But she's shown that uh, she doesn't ha if she doesn't have the answer to a question, she'll just repeat the last intelligent-sounding answer she had. And maybe just add a little more BS, uh, just in case. Um, how can you answer uh, your own party's platform's example of oversights to our economic crisis with, I'll try to find you some and bring them to you? I, I just don't get that. Um, if I was if I was Katie, I would have exploded at that point in time. I, I just it, it's easy when you say to somebody, um, "Listen, I, I'm not really sure about the answer to that, and I'll get back to you." That sounds a little more intelligent when you say, "So, hey, vote for me for president." I have a pen and I have a bracelet, and I can string together words to create a coherent sentence. So vote for me. What I want to know is how could she answer the question that Katie posed uh, to her about uh, possibly did, would she think it would be better to spend that $700 billion on helping out the people who are in the middle class and who are currently experiencing the mortgage crisis. Um, and her answer sounded to me, and I could be wrong, but it sounded to me like she was blaming the people themselves for having overextended credit. Well, if I'm not mistaken, it's always been the, the American way to be in debt, okay? But how can you blame the mortgage crisis currently on the people themselves? That's insane. Um, once she figured out that Katie was getting a little agitated with her answer, she started backpedaling and uh, said something about uh, predatory lending, which was a halfway good save, except that we actually heard what she said, so she can't really get out of that. And it's on tape. Well, I know you shouldn't expect much from me because I am a community organizer, but um, I do actually have a few things to say, and you can let Ms. Palin know that as a community organizer, I actually have an opinion or two, and I do have actual responsibilities as a community organizer. Ask me about my 13 plus years of working with community programs here in, in Florida as well as in New York and volunteering all of my life. And um, I don't think that makes me a silly person because I community organize. I was a little offended by that. Thanks much. Okay, I could go on for days. Let's just put it this way. If you are looking as a voter for the lesser of two evils to vote on, and believe me, I've done it myself, um, McCain is not the lesser of the two evils. And, uh, you know, he... Let's, let's be perfectly honest. He could very well have a heart attack, have the, the cancer issues, whatever, within his first year of being in the White House. And who takes over? Sarah, I'll kill a moose with my bare hands, and, you know, no, you can't have an abortion peeling. And, and that kind of that kind of frightens me, because um, at, at the same time, uh, our enemies will be at the gate just waiting to pounce on us while we try to figure out what in the hell are we supposed to do with this woman who has no clue how to run our country. And, and it's, it, it makes me nutty. So, But that's what I have to say about that. Um, call me crazy. Uh, I think she interviews pro poorly. And um, I'm just really worried, though. I'm really worried that she's kind of what you would call a sleeper. And... Uh, suddenly on Thursday when they go to debate her and Joe Biden, um, she's suddenly come out, going to come out sounding like a Mensa, you know, um, not because I think she's a good study, but because maybe she's been hiding from us just how truly smart she is. She wants everybody to think she's a silly woman, you know, and then she's going to come out and just pound the snot out of Joe Biden. Let's hope not. And that's kind of far-stretched too, isn't it? All right. All right. I, I take that one back. But anyway, it should be enjoyable. I can't wait. And uh, look for my blog after that because I'm sure I'm going to have plenty to say. Thanks for listening.